Hi, I'm Bill McCabe. Welcome to tape number two, Basic Escapes, Locks, and Twists. This is the second tape in our Gun Fu series of instructional tapes, and the whole inspiration for this tape is feedback that we've had from other martial arts artists that we've visited with over the years, addressing some of their questions and concerns as to what uh, is the best thing to do uh, when you're in tight with an opponent and the punching, kicking, and blocking doesn't work as effectively as you would hope for it to work, but you're not, under the, you're not yet at the point where you have complete control of the attack or of your opponent. And historically, this goes back to Judo and, and Aikijitsu and Jujitsu and even you know, for some of the Korean arts on Hapkido, there's a whole constellation or universe of control techniques in each of those styles. And those control techniques focus fundamentally on several uh, uh, general categories. One is what's uh, described as a category of arm bars and arm bar like techniques. And two is the uh, general category of wrist twist and wrist locks. Now, uh, in concert with those general categories of techniques is also the third category, which is while you're learning those, you also have to learn how to escape from them. So uh, what we hoped to do with this particular tape was to distill some of our knowledge and experience into a tape which would be about one hour long that would give you eight, six or seven instructional blocks that you could take and work on for a period of two months and master these basic concepts. Okay, we'll start out with the basic uh, escapes. We'll go to the arm bars, then we'll go to the wrist locks, and then we'll go to the four corners throws, and then we'll show you some applications, and then finally we'll show you how to combine these in different situations. Uh, we want you to be mindful, though, that we are setting this tape up in such a way that, that you should practice it uh, in a certain way to, to get the best and maximum benefit from it. Uh, if you would ask me, if you met me somewhere, uh, what the best way to practice from this tape would be, I would suggest to you that you take the tape, you look at it front to back, maybe two or three times over a period of a week, so that you know everything that's on the tape. Once that's out of the way, go back to the beginning of the tape, pick an instructional block, whatever instructional block you want, but we suggest going back to the beginning and starting with the basics, focus on that with a partner for one to two weeks until you master everything that's in that tape. Mastering means that whatever is in that instructional block that you should just be able to do, you know, almost from memory. That doesn't mean you have to know it all, but if someone grabs you or ex executes one of those techniques on you, you should be able to respond to it in the same way that you see it on the tape. So you're playing copycat to what we're doing on the tape. And if you play copycat enough, by the time you're halfway through the tape, you'll have mastered these basic techniques and you'll be able to move forward and incorporate them into your own martial arts practice. Okay, so without further uh, dialogue on that point, we're going to move directly forward into the first instructional block, which is the basic escapes. Okay, the first uh, segment of basic escapes is the breakout techniques or breakaway techniques. Now we're going to talk about several types of escapes, but let's move first right into what we consider the four elementary moves that are the foundation of all successful escapes. Now, I don't want you to be judgmental about this. I don't want you to look at this and say, this won't work if I'm going to fight to the, for my life or, or where my life depends on it, because this is just the foundation or the building block for more that is to follow. But this is the foundation that you have to master before you go on. It's that important. Uh, Sensei Ralph Howard will be assisting me. Uh, Sensei Ralph, I'm going to ask you to stand over here just for a second. First thing you need to do when you're working with a partner is always establish what we call the working distance uh, uh, for uh, uh, focusing on these types of techniques. We call this the self-defense distance, which is arms extended to where you can just touch. Okay. He grabs at my right hand. This is the basic escape. First move, I move forward and out. Now we're going to do the four techniques for you. Then we'll go back and give you the instruction on each of the techniques. We want you to see them first. Number two. Number three. And number four. Okay, again. 
Number one. Number two. Number three. And number four. Okay, this time hold tight. Number one. Number two. Number three. And number four. Okay, this time hold as tight as you can. Now while he's doing that, I want you to observe that I'm not moving any uh, faster or any more aggressively or with any more force than I was doing on the very first set, even though he has upped his intensity with each of the successive sets. The power of the technique is in the technique itself, and if you can do the technique, it'll work, no matter how hard he's grabbing. Okay, number one. Number two. Number three. And number four. Okay, the secret of this technique is something called the live hand. Now, I'm going to ask that the camera zoom in a little bit if we can. Grab this, sir. As he holds tight, watch my right hand open up into the live hand position. Okay, this would be like you're holding a basketball. And what the live hand does is two things. It directs your internal energy outward so that you have energy applied to the point where you need it. But look at his wrist as he holds tight. See what the, what the live hand does? It provides just a slight opening of those fingers. So at the same time that you're focusing your energy to that point, and you can actually see my hand turning red as the tape is filming. At the same time that you're focusing energy to that point, you're creating an opening or a bridge or a gap in his grasp, which is the window of opportunity for you to get out. Okay, so that's very important to make sure that you master the live hand. Okay, again, the live hand is fundamental to each of the techniques. Notice how I perceive each technique with the live hand. Number one, it forces a release. Number two, it forces the release. Number three, forces the release. And number four, forces the release. Okay? Explaining each of the techniques. Number one, he grabs with left hand to your right hand. Now you want to learn all these on one side. After you master the four techniques on one side, then you'll go to the opposite side. But learn them on one side first. He grabs, I step forward and out with my right leg, doing a live hand. And as I do that, my right palm follows the ground until there's a release, concluding when the release is accomplished. Again, he grabs, Notice also how I drop beneath his center of balance or center of gravity as I execute the movement. So he can't adjust to my move. Again, he grabs. How effective is the technique? Grab with two hands, sir. He grabs with two hands. It simply works. Number two. Live hand. This is an easy technique. You step forward just like you're going to touch your elbow to his head with the live hand. Okay, sometimes a student will say to me, what if I don't do the live hand? Doesn't it just work all the time? And the answer is no. When you have a closed hand, the opponent can read your motion because you give away your strength by hardening it, and then he can read your intent to move your legs and everything. He'll adjust immediately if you do it with a fist. For example, as I try to do, execute the same number two technique with a closed fist, Look how you adjust with the live hand. See, the live hand is soft. There's no read. I'm not doing this hard. See, I'm relaxed. Observe. Hit, and you're released. Okay, number three. Number three technique is the same as number two, but you're stepping back. Stepping back, just like you're wiping the side of your face. Same as number two, live hand. Notice that I'm soft. If I go tight, he can respond. He can adjust his weight. If I go soft, he cannot. Number four, I prefer to do number four by stepping in. As I step in, the life hand executes 
and my hand drives back straight behind me. It also opens up a nice counter here if you want to do that. Okay? Some people prefer to step back the whole way, which is fine if you do that. You actually use the person's imbalance in front of him to assist your release. So for example, you still have the counter there. A short person has to vary this. And a lot of short persons will, on their own, modify the technique so that they bring the elbow up over the top, use the elbow to assist the release, and that's fine if you do that. Now we're going to swing around and give you an opposite side view of the techniques. Actually, what I'll do is, is I will attack Sensei Ralph, and uh, Sensei Ralph Howard will execute the techniques from his side, giving you the opposite side perspective. Great. Right? First thing you do, and moving in. Number one. Number two. Number three. And number four. Thank you. Live hand. Okay, in Gun Fu and in other martial arts, there's a whole series of exercises that you practice to master the live hand. We're not going to go into that on this tape. There's no time to do that. And besides, if you just think of it, like you've got a basketball in your hand, pushing it out, pushing it forward, lifting it up, bringing it down, making sure that your hand covers the whole basketball, you'll master the live hand. None of this stuff won't work. None of this stuff won't work. It'll get you into trouble. Okay? Now I want to take just a second and emphasize to you that you can do this. This is something that all of you can accomplish, and we're out here rooting for you. That's why we're doing these tapes. We know that if you were in our class, you would do this just as well as we do it in less than a week. So you take this and work on it for a whole week until you master it. Segment two of basic escapes, prayer hand, wedge, and reverses. We're going to go immediately to the second series of techniques once you master the four basic breakouts the variations of techniques that follow from that applying those same principles. The prayer hand, you ever see in the Orient? Some parts of Asia people greet each other with the prayer hand. That's to recognize the divine nature of all martial artists, human beings too I assume, but as martial artists we know exactly what that means, but it also means something besides that because the prayer hand is one of the techniques that compiles all of the energy into your body and focuses it into one part in front of you so that you can utilize it to protect yourself. So for example, he grabs prayer hand, prayer hand, grabs the other side, prayer hand, see my hand, prayer hand, grabs with two hands, prayer hand up to the side, grabs with two hands underneath, prayer hand. All of these are techniques that you can do. Prayer hand, I grab with two hands, Prayer hand, I grab with two hands. Prayer hand, grab, prayer hand up, prayer hand down, prayer hand again, prayer hand down to the ground. Okay, it continues from there. Uh, he grabs high, grabs underneath, prayer hand. Okay, but when you do that, the prayer hand becomes something else. We're going to talk about that at this point. This would be the wedge. When the prayer hand opens up, it becomes the wedge. Okay, when the prayer hand opens down, it becomes the wedge with power. He stands over here. Grab. Wedge. Prayer hand in, wedge out. Okay, you have other options here, of course, if you want to go for them, which would be fine. Prayer hand grabs again, becomes the wedge with the hands. Down. Hit. Hit. Okay, again, different type of a wedge. Over the top, using the elbow for the wedge. Wedge, hit. Wedge, hit. Again, grabs, double wedge. Lock, down, hit, back. Reversing techniques. He grabs, whatever he does, reverse it. Grabs, reverse it. Okay, to reverse techniques, we use what we call the U-hand. He grabs, 
See how the U hand works? Gains control, forces a release of the grab, and you've got control of the opponent. Okay, he grabs with two hands, reversing the grab. Becomes a prayer hand again. Down, prayer hand again, like we did just a few seconds ago. Grabs here, reverse, go back to him. Okay? There are many types of reverses that you can do. In effect, once you learn the basic escapes and the prayer hand, the next place to go is doing reverse, sort of like a sticky hands kind of drill. You play it back and forth with your partner. You grab, he reverses, then you reverse, then he reverses, then you reverse until you completely master the techniques. And you can reverse inside or outside. Okay, or you can reverse one hand switching to the next. All that's feasible. Okay, now you've got the uh, uh, prayer hand, the wedge, and the reverse. Practice that for a few days and move on to the next segment of the basic escapes. By the way, assisting me in this segment was Sensei Crescentus. Great, thank you, sir. Okay, we're about to do our third segment of basic escapes. We're going to introduce you to the crane, over and under techniques, and striking vital points as a measure for escape. First though, the crane. Now the crane is something that's very important to everyone in Gun Fu. In fact, our school in Tacoma, Washington is called the Iron Crane School, in part due to the inspiration that we take from the movement of the crane. But visualize a prayer hand that you were doing just a few minutes ago. The prayer hand is a closed move, whereas the crane is an open move. Okay, now the open move doesn't appear at first to be strong, but the way that you execute it is what stirs the drink, so to speak. It's what makes everything fall into place and work effectively. So he grabs, observe, the crane, I break his balance with the crane, take him down to the ground. Okay, comes back up. Break his balance, down to the ground. Now, what's the essence to his balance being broken? I want you to look really closely to what's taking place. This is, in our system, what we refer to as the bow and arrow principle. And you picture yourself drawing the string of a bow. Okay, what you're doing is you're separating forces. So right now, his forces are integrated. You're taking those integrated forces and splitting them into two to the point where you can now deal with them effectively. Right here, his forces are integrated. Now they're split in two. Here, they're integrated. Now they're split in two. See, he almost falls just from the move. Okay, that's the power of the crane. Now the crane as an animal is extremely deceptive because it appears weak and vulnerable. And just as it appears that you're about to defeat the crane, suddenly it's not so weak and vulnerable as you thought. And that's the whole theory of the crane in Oriental lore. He grabs, crane, first move, right hand low, left hand high. After you do that, turn clockwise, bring the person down to the ground. You can see in this situation, he drops onto my knee, which is one of the attendant counters as the crane effects. Turns the person around, there's a three strike at that point, which I was trying not to do just uh, to avoid possible injury as we were filming. But uh, as you do it in practice, you need to be very careful about that. Opposite direction crane here, now, yeah, the other techniques that you can use to finish your point off if that's your choice. Crane. Crane from the rear, opponent grabs, spread, in, release, hit. Crane from the rear, hold tight. Crane under, <coughs> around. Okay? Now the crane blends right into the next move, which is called under and over. Grab a two-hand, sir. Under and over. Under, over. Okay, now we could have done a throw there. Again, we're partners practicing with courtesy toward one another. Under, over. If we can zoom in on this, sir. The grip. Remember the live hand from before? The release, under, 
reverse all the techniques you were working on before are now combining into something more complex. So make sure you understand this. And over. Okay, see how this is effectively controlling his balance so that you can transition this into a throw if that's your choice. Okay, third element of the third set of basic uh, releases is striking toward vital points. If, a person, if an opponent grabs you, vital point. Okay, opponent grabs you, vital point. Okay, opponent grabs you, vital point. Grabs you, you hand, vital point. Okay, grabs, you want him down on the ground, rest his hand, vital point. Okay, vital points all the way around. See the knee? Vital points, vital points, vital points even now. Up, oh, sir? Okay, I grab, vital point, here. Here. Okay, good. Vital point. Good. Vital point. Ah, good. Vital point. Vital point. Good. Grabs. Vital point. Grab. Good. Thank you, sir. Yes. Notice how we exercise with control, even when we elevate the speed and the pace of our techniques. Practice with caution at all times. These can cause serious injuries. All of these things on this tape that you just saw in the last segment you can do with one week's practice if you do it intently with a dedicated partner. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about the armbar before we go further in the lesson. The armbar itself uh, is one of the most effective but at the same time one of the most challenging of all the techniques in the martial arts. It requires the utmost in precision. And as you go through the uh, segment on the armbar, you'll see exactly what we're talking about in terms of precision. Always be mindful that if you vary the armbar or if you lose the precision at any point in time, it will not be an effective technique for you. So pay close attention to the principles, the underlying principles of the armbar as they're about to be explained. Secondly, uh, later on in the uh, session, we'll talk about some of the applications of the armbar. And also later on, we'll talk about what to do if you lose control of the person using an armbar, what type of fallback techniques are there. Assisting us in instructing the armbar segment is Sensei Calvin Devereaux of the Iron Crane Gun Fu School. Sensei Calvin, I'm going to turn the session over to you at this point. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, sir. For the basics of the armbar, we want to first examine the the location of the elbow and the angle of both the forearm and the upper arm. As we move into the position, the basic position of the arm bar, we're going to place the ulna bone three fingers above the elbow so that we're striking the Golgi reflex. As we place the forearm onto the upper arm of our attacker, we need to make sure that it is perp perpendicular both on this plane and on this plane. Although the technique is performed with the elbow fully extended, in order to gauge our forearm, we need to examine where our opponent's forearm would be if the elbow were bent at a 90 degree angle. It needs to be completely perpendicular and again perpendicular on, on this plane with his upper arm. As we extend the arm out, our attacking hand is in a live hand formation so that we're digging into the reflex and there's a slight scooping motion at the bottom so that you're coming in three fingers above the elbow and then scooping toward the elbow. Notice the reaction. In order to enhance the technique, when you perform your basic block, you can slide down to the wrist, place the middle finger and the thumb in between the bones of the wrist and the base of the hand so that you're striking those points. You can also bend over the back of the hand. This provides control over the entire arm and the rotation of the arm, but also provides an extra point of pressure, each of these adding to the key point, which is three fingers above the elbow. As we take the opponent down with the arm bar, we want to ensure that we're upright, that we're moving from one point, and that our opponent's balance is being broken, but ours is always maintained. 
That's the basic position for the arm bar. And as Sensei Bill just mentioned, we'll be moving into more advanced applications of it in just a moment. Okay, right now we're going to show you ways to practice the arm bar with your partner. Make sure you do this. Make sure you practice with your partner. And I'm going to tell you right now that you'll seem a little bit frustrated with this technique at first, but you can do this. Stay with it. Uh, before long, you'll know when your partner's doing it effectively against you because you'll be telling to lay off on it a little bit. It does begin to hurt. Uh, when you're applying all these things uh, effectively in concert, they're cumulative. An effective arm bar can stop an attack. An ineffective one will only get you into trouble. Best way to start practicing it, he grabs it in my right hand with his right hand. Remember a few minutes ago we talked about the escapes, the reverse? See the reverse. See how it aligns his elbow, the three finger point, directly for my placement onto that point, in effect executing the arm bar. I go in, place, bring him down with the pressure. Now I'm only bringing him down to this point for practice purposes. Your objective is not to damage or seriously injure your opponent. Okay? Now he grabbed right hand to right hand. Remember that. Right hand to right hand, left hand to left hand. See the rotation with the live hand? If I do that with a closed hand, he'll be able to resist it because he'll be able to respond to me. Soft hand reaction, over the top, into the arm bar. See the dig. Okay? Left hand, reversing it for the camera, over the top. Okay? Reverse grab release, arm bar. Notice how I try to sense, how I try to read where the flex of his arm is. You see the flex there? I straighten the arm out, over the top. And I need to caution you about two things. If you overreach it, he can bend out of the arm bar. Okay? If you don't, if you don't place it far enough up of the arm, you can also get it out of the arm bar. He can flex out of it and do some technique against you. So the placement on the three finger point is crucial to the technique and then controlling it. So for example, if he begins to vary his arm a little bit, notice how I control it. He varies it again, all the way down to the ground. Okay. When you practice it with each other, I grab, he sets it up. Okay, I begin to vary it. He corrects. I vary it. He corrects. Okay, all the way down to the ground without hurting each other. Make sure that you begin to vary it after you get the basic technique. You begin to vary it so that you develop confidence in correcting should your attacker or your opponent or your partner try to fool you out of the move. Okay, other ways to use the arm bar. This is the obvious way, over the top, he grabs with two hands. Same thing works, same way. Two hands, okay? He grabs with left hand to the by right hand, opposite side, clear, snap his finger, his thumb, arm bar from this side. Okay, he grabs from this side, over the top, variation of an arm bar, watch closely. Strike him. <laughs> See, so the arm bar is now an arm break. Still, essentially, an arm bar technique. He grabs low. Here, grab, watch. Grab, strike. Still an arm bar technique. He grabs the other side. In here, grabbing. Watch how I use the arm bar. Applied with my bicep. Start you attack us from the side. There's another attacker coming in from the side right now. He throws a punch at me. I drive this man into him. Thank you, sir. So the arm bar has many, many applications. Now variations of the arm bars, over the top, chicken wing variation, over the top, up and down. Watch closely. This is an arm bar. See it? Watch the conversion. Still an arm bar. Over the top, coming up. Another variation of the arm bar here, over the top, down. Variation of the arm bar, he grabs one hand, strike of the side. Strike. See it? Arm break. Grabs at my belt. Grabs low. Watch closely. Arm break. Stronger arm break. See the difference? All that is the arm bar applied with a different philosophy. Instead of controlling, using it to break the opponent's arm, using it to move the person into another attacker, using it to vary your own position. All those are possible. All those are possibilities. We talked a little while ago, though, about what happens if the person starts to roll out of an arm bar. So for example, let's switch sides so the camera can pick up on this a little bit better. 
He grabs, left hand, over the top. I'm about to place him into an arm bar. He begins to move out of it. Watch closely. Maintain control on my chest with this point, right here, pressure point, right down to the ground. Okay? Same thing intentionally as a technique in its own right. Setting up as an elbow strike over the top, down. Very painful technique. See the roll. It's an arm bar variation. Okay, you tighten the muscles, you tighten the ligaments, you wrap them around the nerves. In this case, it would be the ulnar nerve crossing over, driving it down. Watch. Watch the control you have. Just one point. It really does hurt that much. Okay? Now the variation. He senses I'm going to put him into an arm bar. He flexes through his arm. He's about to hit me. I take his wrist. See it? The twist. Do a close-up on this, sir, if you will. He grabs up high. And we'll talk more about wrist pinches a little bit later. Look. See it? Just like wringing a cloth. Okay? Stay down there, sir, if you will. Uh, lie down. Arm bar on the ground, variation. He's here. I want him around on his stomach. Watch closely. Keep the camera on Cynthia Calvin, if you will. Here, look at the arm bar. On my leg, over and down. See the arm bar? Look at the variation now. Still an arm bar. Watch closely. Still an arm bar. Can you get up, sir? No, Cynthia. Okay, watch closely. Nothing there at all. Still an arm bar. All those are variations. Thank you, sir. Take those. Play with them. One other variation for you before we close down this segment of the lesson. He throws a punch. He's down on the ground. Okay, still an arm bar. Still an arm bar. Okay, still an arm bar. Thank you, sir. Pick the ones that you like the most. Make them part of your martial arts style. We'll move on to the next segment. Welcome back to the tape. Now that you've mastered the arm bar techniques and the basic escapes, let's take a look at the wrist techniques, the wrist locks and the wrist attacks. Now, before we talk about these uh, generically, let's just take a look at uh, a fundamental point of all wrist attacks. There's only a certain number of general categories of movement that apply to the wrist from the perspective of self-defense. And, and almost all attacks are in some way a combination of the following. Sir, if you'll assist. Uh, let me borrow your hand if you don't mind. Wrist flexion. Flexion is when a joint bends back onto itself. Okay, this would be wrist flexion. This would be wrist flexion. Okay, and what you do is you flex a wrist beyond its ability to react to the flexion, then it becomes an attack or self-defense technique. So for example, mild flexion into a critical flexion. The opponent goes down and the technique is effective in its own right. So remember that flexion is when a joint bends into itself. Other examples would be your arm bending back up to your bicep. That would be flexion. Extension would be when uh, a joint bends out and away from its natural plane of folding, it would be the opposite move to flexion. Flexion would be like this, extension would be like this. You can see the effect and the impact for extension. Okay? In many respects, an arm bar is an example of an extension move because flexion would be on the opposite plane. Okay? Usually flexion is part of what the human body is able to do comfortably Extension is usually opposite of what the comfortable movement is. Now there are some examples of ways that you can work flexion against itself by putting devices into the flexion equation to augment the power of the flexion. Can you stand up, sir? Okay, so first is flexion, second is extension. Okay, third move is twisting, twisting outward. Twisting outward, meaning to the side. We call this laterally. Lateral means away from the center line of the body. So this would be a lateral twist. Okay, if he was here with his left hand, the lateral twist would be here. 
same concept. Okay? The opposite to the lateral twist would be the twist inside the hand, would be a medial twist, would be here. See the twist? Twist, and you can change this into other techniques, of course. This would be a flexion. See how it becomes a flexion? Okay? So what do we have now? A flexion, extension, twist outward, twist inward. Next are the pinches. Pinches, several different varieties. Up, pinch. Okay? You can grab with one hand, one finger, pinch. Most people will use these like three fingers. Sort of a six gun kind of movement. I'm going to let you take a close look at this. See my hand in a six gun position? Take three fingers, and you can practice it this way with your partner. See the six gun? Wherever my finger points is where the maximum leverage is going to be against the pinched wrist. Now, pinch means that the wrist and the ligaments and the nerves of the wrist are tightened so much that they're at their extremes of comfort. So just a little bit more motion puts them beyond the red line to the point of pain. Okay, in this case, you can take the person all the way down to the ground. Okay, now watch closely. If I want to vary this to an extension move and get them back up, I just turn it over and get them back up. See the extension. Different kind of an arm lock. Now we're going to take a real close look at these techniques right now. I'm going to ask that the camera zoom in on the hand position because the key move to all the rest technique, to all the wrist techniques, and also the hardest one to master, is the basic outward twist of the wrist. So he comes forward with a punch or with his hand, whatever it is. Step back just a bit, sir. Here's my position. I land on his wrist. See where my thumb is at? There's a little spot there between the little knuckle, the number five finger and the number four finger. That's a control point. Now just keep your eyes on the equation here as you turn it about so you can see the opposite side. See how I'm grasping the fleshy part of his thumb also as a control point. Now I'm going to let you see both sides here. One side, other side. One side, other side. Now that alone in the grip of an experienced martial artist is enough to take the person down or to break the wrist. That alone will do it. But if you're just learning this technique, assist it with your second hand. Come over the top, with the palm of your hand, exert an assisting force to take the person down. Okay? So here's how you practice it. He puts his hand out like he's going to touch me. I grab it to control it. Make sure I've got the points under control, and I turn my body, taking it out, assisting. Okay? I come back, mirroring. He does the same. Assisting. He comes in. Here. Grab. Down. Coming back. Again. In. Down. Now watch. Variation. At this point, with one hand. Okay? Try that. You try it too, sir. Variation. One hand. Okay? He comes here. Quick variation to one hand. He comes a throw. Backward throw down to the ground. Okay? Inside wrist move. This is still the same wrist technique. It's a lateral wrist twist, but you're doing it from the inside position. Watch closely. Here, I'm doing it inside out rather than the way we were just doing it, I'm doing it from the inside going out, reversing the technique, but still basically doing the same technique. So for example, he comes in with a left hand attack. I do the wrist twist, assisting. Now he grabs my right hand using his left hand. This time I'm doing the control with my left hand. Same technique. Okay, but I switched hands outside. Snap, you can see the torque and the pressure it's putting on. But watch closely now, because here's a variation that's all important for you. He grabs, technique, going in, down, under, and up, driving the elbow into the solar plexus. Now this, this tightens this whole upper body and causes a great deal of nerve pain throughout the system. See it? It also cranks the wrist, the elbow, and the shoulder, so they're at the point of near snapping. He grabs with the right hand, same situation, under, over, up. See how it works. Now watch closely. The 
If I don't want to snap the elbow, if I just want to control him or disorient him, or if his partner's coming from that direction, same technique over here, into an arm bar, driving him down to ground or into his partner's incoming direction. Okay? How do these work with multiple attacks or multiple techniques, whatnot? He comes in, grab uh, two hands. Okay? Same move we were just doing. The inside wrist lock, under, over. Other side, under, over. Grab the two hands. Here you can go to an arm bar or you can go to a wrist lock. Just like we were doing. Okay? I had to give uh, Sensei Chris a respite here because I'm wearing out his joints, so I'm going to let him do a little bit back at me. I grab, he can just do a release any way he can get into it. Good. I grab his sleeve. Okay, now convert it. There you go. That's the all important transition which we're going to talk about right now. All joint locks, manipulations, arm bars, and control techniques relate. It's just like little knots on the string. They're all part of the string and each one can take the place of the other at any point in time. So if you step back just a bit, sir, throw a punch in. Arm bar. Now watch how I transition from an arm bar to an outside wrist lock with my right hand. All the way down to the ground. Up here, sir. This is an all-important transition, so you need to practice this and master it. Now there's two variations of this transition. We're looking at the basic variation right now. He punches. A trap, arm bar, wrist lock, down. Okay, excellent control on his part. Again, always protect your partner going down. Over here, sir. You punch, look at the setup. There's the arm bar. Now it could be a snap. See it? It could be a snap. You can hit here. You can hit, kick, then do the wrist twist. Now watch closely. If you need to augment the power on this, Convert it into a number four reverse wrist twist to the outside, which goes from the arm bar, number four. Can you see the number four? And down. Now watch closely as he's down on the ground. See the control that you have? All the way down on the ground. Up, sir. Okay, opposite side. Since I Chris demonstrating, I'm attacking. all these techniques useful on point direct applications you have to do them with the intent to learn the technique but also in such a way that you don't injure your partner at any point in time when a technique is applied full pressure the sound of a double tap means release immediately don't fail to do that if you get to the point where you're getting careless practicing these techniques and the practice session before injury occurs. Okay, we'll move on to the next learning segment. Mental of instruction will be called the four corners throw. And the four corners throw was probably made most uh, popular by Master Yoshiba, uh, the great Aikido master who was notorious for doing uh, a throw, even in his uh, older age, where he'd be reaching over a person, uh, reversing the grip on the hand, and tossing the person backwards. And you'll see what we mean in just a second. Uh, in fact, though, the four corners throw is more of an arm break or a shoulder attack than it is a throw. It's rarely used exclusively as a throw. More frequently, it's used to take an opponent down or to snap a wrist or an arm before the, the opponent goes to the ground. There's a real significance, though, to the expression four corners. Now, when they talk about this throw having four corners, you have to think of it symbolically. Like, we talk about the four corners of the earth, and it means everywhere on the earth. And the four corners throw is, is quite unique because once you master the throw, you can do it from almost any position and move your opponent to, norm, to almost any direction. So always bear that in mind as you practice this. Try to look for little wrinkles in the way that you can apply this technique so that you can move your partner uh, different directions, take them down different ways, put them into different final positions. Four corners throw, all possibilities are there. Uh, one final point before we start. 
is that the four corners throw, like the arm bar, requires considerable concentration and practice on your part to master. Please make the effort, because we know you can do this, and we know it will be an important part of your martial arts technique. Okay, setting up the four corners throw, I'm working with Sensei Ralph Howard, right? Self-defense distance. He grabs left hand to my right hand. Okay, this is what the throw looks like. And right here would be the throw or the arm snap. Okay, releasing. How do you get the guy to that position? We're going to talk you through that very slowly. Now we'll give you both views. We'll do one side, then we'll switch sides, and then you see it coming back. He grabs. Okay, remember the releases that we talked about early on. This is the number one release, and your left hand goes into support it. Notice the position of my right foot on the ground. Okay, so take a look at my uh, foot on the ground, take a look at the hand position. And what you do is, is you step across, and you can almost do an arm bar here, or an arm attack, but what you're going to do in this case is you're going to step underneath the arm, and you're in a pretty secure position because the opponent is twisted and off balance. You're going to step all the way through. So you go underneath, take a big, as big a step as possible, and reach back as far as you can. Look at the big loop my hand takes. That's what destroys your opponent's balance and fully extends. Remember what the word extends mean, means from earlier on today. Fully extend your opponent so he can't recover his balance and he's ready to drop to the ground. Okay, releasing. Opposite side view. We switch sides, sir. He grabs. The step, the position. Again, if you'll do a close up on that. On the hand and the foot. Okay, the release. Stepping through and back. Look at the full extension. Look at my legs. Look at the full spread of my stance as I maximize my power. And release. Okay, that's the essence of the four corners throw. Reversing at this point in time. I'll come back to Sensei Ralph, grabbing. Okay, on the other side. Now watch, different variations of the four corners throw. Here, I grab opposite hand. Variation, same throw, quick stepping to the outside. See how quick you can apply the throw, quite a difference. Again, he grabs opposite hand, grabs, I simply roll to the outside, lock his hand, U hand, and four corners throw. I take him down to the ground, I can strike with my knee, or hit him as he goes down. Stepping up, please. Okay, one more time. He grabs. I go under, over, and down. Grabs, under, over, down. See how clean the throw can be? Now the beauty of the four corners throw is that it maintains its power and its elegance in virtually every position. So say he grabs with two hands two hands in my one hand. Okay, as he does that, the release, we talked about the releases earlier, four corners throw. I want the camera to see my face. <laughs> he grabs the two hands, watch the release. This is the under over release. You can do it either way. Okay, I'm gonna come closer to the camera so the camera can see this. This is an important little release, observe. Okay, now watch closely. We're going to do the release over here. The release directly into the four corners throw. Okay, now notice how we're doing this with grace and respect and courtesy to one another. My objective isn't to throw this guy 200 times in a workout. Nobody can learn martial arts by doing that. He knows I know this stuff. I think you know that I know it too, so I don't have to beat him up to prove it to anybody. Okay? Your objective is to work with the same courtesy and respect with whoever you work out with. If you ever meet me, please don't throw me hard on the ground unless that's the plan. Okay? 
Our plan is to develop technique and to perfect it. Four corners throw. Almost any way he grabs, you can get into the throw. Okay? He grabs up high. Same deal. Release. Four corners throw. Okay? He grabs low. Release. Yeah, I got it. Release. Four corners throw. This time I'm doing the throw with a bent wrist lock, a slight variation, which still works. But the beauty of the four corners throw, if you grab that chair for me, sir, thank you, is that it works from almost any position. Right here, thank you. Let's give it a slight angle for the camera, for the camera view. Okay, he's here. I tell him, please, don't, don't, don't hurt me, sir. He grabs my hand. Watch the quickness of the throw. You're here, down, look where he goes. Okay? Now you can really see how the four corners throw takes on its meaning if you if you watch some of the moves here. He grabs the same move, four corners throw, this time throwing him out here. Twist then wrist lock at this point, okay? Switching hands, any way you want to vary it, it's workable to do. Okay, four corners throw, opposite side. Here, same thing, reversing and driving him into the chair. Releasing him in time to protect himself. He grabs with two hands, one hand doesn't mind. Okay, say he kicks me. Kick, trap the kick, hand, four corners throw, under the leg. See the lock? People wonder if you could do the arm bars and the throws against the legs, you certainly can. He throws a kick. Here, arm bar, leg bar, leg bar, variation twist. We on the ground. Say he does a wrist lock on me, throws me to the ground. I'm down on the ground. Now watch. Here, here, four corners throw. Okay, that's how sweet a move it is. I just wanted you to see that somebody could still do that on the planet Earth and get it on film just once before we end the session. Okay, that concludes this particular learning block, the four corners throw. Take it and practice it.